Mr. President and ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful to have this opportunity to address the Norwegian-Ukrainian Business Forum. Last time I spoke at a forum like this was in Kiev two years ago. I'm sure many of you were present, but hopefully the Norwegian-Ukrainian business community has grown since then. Much has happened in these past two years, especially in Ukraine. I hope that some of what has been achieved in the political sphere can now be felt in the sphere also of business. Our goal is to create better conditions for you to conduct business in and between Ukraine and Norway. I have come here today to share some thoughts on what we can do as political leaders to create the conditions needed for you to succeed. And most importantly, to engage with you and get your perspectives of what we can achieve together. Earlier today, the President and I had a very fruitful and substantial discussion on a range of issues of common concern. We also explored our bilateral cooperation, including our economic ties. One important matter we discussed is the vital link between increased trade and macroeconomic stability. Our countries have the same fundamental view that in order to create sustainable economic growth, we need trade and business to flourish, both in and between our countries. And I believe that we both recognize that the political effort required to bring this about. To achieve economic growth, Ukraine must undertake structural reforms, and you are doing that. It's not an easy task, even in the best of times. Effective reforms require difficult and costly political decisions. In order to realize the potential for increased cooperation in the business sphere, we need to see real change in Ukraine. And Norway supports Ukraine in these efforts to reform. We believe it's in our interest and in the interest of Europe as a whole to promote a politically and economically stable and strong Ukraine. We also believe that the destabilization of Ukraine would have direct adverse consequences both for Norway and the rest of Europe. We have supported and will continue to support Ukraine in what are still very challenging times. Our objective, however, goes far beyond the current situation. There's no reason why Ukraine cannot become a major player in Europe in the future. The country clearly has great potential. We want to develop our relationship to Ukraine, not only to help turn this vision into reality, but also to create opportunities for Norwegian and Ukrainian business to flourish and prosper. Although drawing parallels between countries always glosses over important differences, it can be useful for illuminating the potential that exists. And I would like in this context to use the example of Poland, your neighboring country, which today is a major trading partner for Norway. <coughs> Poland was among those um, of the countries that were aiming for Euro-Atlantic integration during the 1990s, and we supported them in this. More than 300 Norwegian-owned companies today have a presence in Poland. Norway is currently the most important trading partner for the Polish ship industry, building industry, and Poland now constitutes the biggest single market worldwide for export of Norwegian seafood. Poland has become an, uh, an economic engine, not only in Central Europe, but in Europe as a whole. The example of Poland teaches us a few things about what, a country, uh, what it takes for a country to succeed. Poland went through tough and painful reforms and readjustment. Success requires stamina and, takes, and, and taking on a long-term per perspective. You, as representative of the business community, know all about the need for endurance. However, you all are also operating in a sector where results are in high demand. I would like to raise three points I consider fundamental for countries to create economic growth. The first is the connection between investment and having a predictable and reliable framework. 
This is essentially a question of carrying out the necessary legal, political, and economic reforms for trade and business to prosper. Politicians must take the necessary actions to boost the confidence of investors. For investors to commit, predictability is a key. Second, despite the importance of predictability, investors are not known for risk aversion. Still, if there are too many uncertainties, they will be less inclined to invest. They need to see continuous progress and be confident that there is the necessary political will. Otherwise, they will turn to other markets and to other countries. We, as politicians, must ensure that we deliver on what we have promised. Results are achieved when political will is transformed into plans, which in turn are implemented. And thirdly, I believe that best results are achieved when governments and business sector work together. We need to form partnerships while respecting that we also have different roles to play. The Norwegian-Ukrainian uh, Bilateral Commission on Trade and Economic Cooperation had its first inaugural meeting last month. And I think some of you who are here today were present. It's a precisely the kind of arena that could prove useful. The Business Forum is another important venue where we can create new partnerships. It's an excellent opportunity to share ideas and to connect with potential new partners. And I can hardly think of a more appropriate place to meet than here at the Bay Business School. If more appropriate would be to invite me to my home, Tom Bergen, of course, but, uh, <laughs> uh, you know. I don't think you have, you have too much to do to do two cities in Norway at the same time. But at the Bay, to my knowledge, there are more than 40 Ukrainian students currently completing their bachelor and master's degree at this very school. Many more are studying at other colleges and universities in Norway. And I know that through that, we build long-term partnerships. I know that some, you know, in that age, not everybody might return to Ukraine, you know, because some might stay on of different reasons. It's the most, you know, love-oriented period of people's lives. <laughs> on the other hand, you might also recruit some Norwegians that come back, you know, to Ukraine afterwards. But that's a side effect of so many students studying here. But I would also like to mention the wide-ranging cooperation between Norwegian and Ukrainian institutions in the fields of research and education. Hopefully, this cooperation will result in new business ties between Norway and Ukraine in the future. And I'm particularly pleased to note that the Chamber of Commerce is specifically focusing on the younger generation. Their mindset, their ideas, and their innovative skills will shape future business relations between Ukraine and Norway. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, we have had an interesting and good a discussion earlier today. There's two last years we have had bilateral relations between Ukraine and Norway that have matured significantly. I think your official visit uh, uh, in today takes our cooperation to a new level. And uh, I look to you, all of you business people to make this relationship a success also in the commercial sphere. I think we all should have the ambition to succeed. I would like to hear your input on how we can make sure that the challenges that you are facing are purely in the realm of businesses and that it's not in the realm of politics. Thank you very much. And Mr. President, thank you for the good cooperation that we have.